His name is Michelle Weatherall. He's an author, has several books out. He's been here before, and he's here again. Good morning, uh, Michelle. Good morning. I keep wanting to call you Michael only because... Um, Very English last name. Uh, well, my, my real name is Michael, and I just when I see M-I-C-H, I just do an A-E-L. Me, it's an A-E-L. You, it's E-L. In fact, I think maybe the first time you were here, I might have called you the very first time, Michael. I've been called a lot of things in my life. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, don't be like that. I'll take those ones. They're nice. Um, You're in the press. I was uh, doing, like, slight research, and the good news about having you here is that I didn't do a lot of research because I know you're a good talker, and I'll just come up with stuff, and you'll come up with stuff. Um, But, yeah, you were on uh, Jewel 98.5 yesterday or day before? Yesterday morning, Yeah. yeah. And... Ottawa TV, Big too. time Ottawa, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yesterday wow. was a crazy day. Really? You did everything yesterday? Yeah. yeah. And then also uh, in the afternoon, I did a, a, a YouTube. It's going to air Friday, I think, with uh, Talk to the Mic. <laughs> so it's not out yet now, but it was just it was just nonstop running from yeah, one yeah. to the other. I don't think I'll be doing that again because it's exhausting. Really? Yeah. You had to take a lunch break, too, I saw. Yeah. Between that. Yeah. Uh, why was it exhausting? It's just... They it's, only it's, gave it's, you, like, what, five minutes? Yeah, I know. But you got to get there. You got to park, run around. You got to get your head in the right space for it. And, yeah, it's fun, fun, fun. But it was fun. But it was fun, yeah. yeah. It's always fun. Uh, you were the 2018 uh, Ottawa's Beth author... Uh, but not so much for 2019. No, uh, both were finalists. Were finalists. Both of them were finalists. Yeah, yeah not. Uh, I didn't win either. Oh yeah. Oh wait. Um, was did you get it in 2017 too? Uh, no, I didn't even know it existed. Oh, okay. That's cool. Well, oh yeah. well. Better luck next time. Uh, you got a new book. I do. Uh, wait, before you go on, how many books you got now? Totally? Right now, I have six books published, and they're all related, correct? And they're all but one is related. There's one called The Dark Corner of My Soul. That's a collection of poetry. It has nothing to do with the rest of them because it's poetry. But the other ones are all, they're, the new book, Naros a Journey, is the first book of a new series. It's going to be called Fractures. It takes place in the same universe as the Symbiote series. So it is a separate series, but they do share the same. They're in the same world. Are people going to call you out on that? Mm, I don't think like, so. Like your readers? No, no? I, I don't think so. No. How Let's do you say how, that? And I can't even say that name. Naros? Narrows? Sojourney, Naro. Oh, so the G is silent. This G is silent. Actually, I would have thought it was Nagaro as well. And okay. uh, early on, I had gotten a whole, I got a hold of the embassy of uh, New Zealand. I wanted to get somebody with a background, a cultural background of the Maori, because that's the main storyline in this one. They're set in 1850. And in their own words, uh, Dr. Wango Watiri is the go-to guy for everything Maori. I spoke with him over a year ago to see if he'd be on board as an advisor, and he was. And uh, when it just before it became published, he got a copy of beta copy and went through it, and and that was scary because if anybody has the ability to could have put a kibosh on something, it would have been him. But Why? He, he, well, I really wanted his backing on it yeah. to make sure. I mean, it's it's set in the Maori culture, but the story, the characters happen to be that. I just wanted to be, although it's fiction, I wanted to be as accurate that aspect as possible. Okay. And uh, yeah, he was he was happy with it. He. That was a relief. So describe this character that, or describe these characters that you needed approval by. Like, what what was it specifically? What is it they do? Well, it's just, it's where they live. It's their environment. They exist in some of the culture, some of the mythology behind it. Um, I just want to make sure stuff like that was as close to accurate as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I've done my homework because it was, it is. Where did you get the idea? Well, the, originally, the character Naro makes his first appearance in the final book of the Symbiote series, The Refuse Chronicles. There's a very short piece where he's in it. It doesn't say a lot. It alludes to a lot of other things, but a lot of fans really got attracted to it. Who is this guy? What was going on? And that blossomed into a full novel because there is a huge story to tell, and it, actually it's the beginning of what will be a brand new series. Hmm. All in your head. All in my head so far. Amazing. So why don't we start at the beginning? Um, other than the poetry book, yep, they're all about the symbiote. Yes. What is the premise of the story? In the, for the new listeners? symbiote, the first in the first book, the main character is a master pianist. He's a little bit jaded. He's not happy with music today, and he stumbles across a old old musical piece and traces its composer's ancestor back to today to try to figure out how to perform it. 
and I'm not going to give a lot away with this, but when they figure out how to properly play it, what he discovers is that it wasn't a piece of music that was lost from history, it was deliberately removed from history. And when they do perform it correctly, the music opens a portal outside of our universe and lets something out that shouldn't have been. That's the catalyst that triggers the whole series. Um, in that initial event, the main character loses his wife. In the first book, his motive is trying to find her. And I'm not going to give a lot away by saying it doesn't happen because of the fallout of what follows. But in the second book, The Hunt, it follows from his wife's point of view. And the phenomena begins to escalate at that point. Is she already missing? She's missing at the end of the first one. Or the beginning of the first book, she's just gone. Most people assume she's dead. But he doesn't give up on her because he thinks she's lost. So how can the second book be coming from her point of view because she's not dead she's lost someplace uh, else that that phenomena okay. that gateway or portal that opens right. she gets drawn through it yeah. w w is this considered science fiction uh or it's is it just it's weird fiction weird fiction is a genre a lot of people don't recognize but it has elements of horror it has elements of sci-fi and it has elements of fantasy in it so it's a little bit of all the above i mean i couldn't describe it as sci-fi because it takes place in our world well not today but in the now, the here and now. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing, there's no space or ships or anything like that in it. No aliens in that sense. No phasers. No <laughs> phasers, no lasers, no, nothing like that. And and say that um, genre again, what did you call it? Weird fiction. Weird fiction. Yeah. Is that your term? No, 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 oh, no. That's, that's out there. That's, that's a real oh, genre. Okay. It's, just, it's, it's somewhat obscure. A lot of people don't know it. And mm -hmm. you know, I just try to stay away from it because they don't recognize it. In Googling your name, I see a lot of comparisons between this and Stephen King. Does yeah. that make you, is that a accurate? Let's start with, is it accurate? Is, is, like, I don't, um, Margaret is listening. She's Miss Stephen King <laughs> in the background. Um, if somebody likes Stephen King, will yeah. they automatically like this? I've, I have had a handful of people say that. I'll, from my own personal point of view, I don't particularly care for Kevin's, Stephen King's works, but that's just a taste thing. Yeah. Um, I'll take those comments. They're, they're, they're compliments for sure. I can see it in the sense that Stephen King was very heavily influenced by H.P. Lovecraft. And he's one of my favorite authors as well. My whole series takes place in the Lovecraftian world. So you can see if both writers come from that same genesis point. I guess there's going to be crossovers so like that. A few, yeah. So a few avenues. You're, yeah, like, absolutely. Okay. Uh, and which which one is? You, what are you showing me here? This is not the first one. This is the first one. Oh. Uh, what it's the it's the thirtieth year anniversary since I wrote it, and I had wanted to Whoa, coincide thirty it, years. I know it's you've scary. You've had this for thirty years. I've had this for thirty years. Yeah. You, but you've only been on the show like. Yeah, I know. It's only I've years. only started publishing stuff within the last four years. Oh, okay. So, but I mean, the original one was actually written thirty years ago. Wait, where was it sitting? In a desk drawer, just collecting dust forever. Oh, okay, uh, I'm, I didn't know that. Um, you, you worked at a, a bindery. Do you still do that? Stuff? Yeah, I work in printing. You still do that? Yeah, I okay. still do that. So, but is that what made you say, "Hey, I'm going to print that no, stuff actually, in the drawer"? Was, I got into a conversation with my daughter a few years ago about that. And it, it's funny with the the wisdom of children. She looked at me like I grew a second head and said, this is what you do for a living. Why don't you just take the next step and self-publish? And it's like, uh, you know what? Why don't I just do that? And that really was the idea behind that's That's, that's what triggered it. Okay. And then I, at that point, and it's funny how this, the 30th anniversary, the Natty edition came about was um, this particular release has both the first and second books in one volume. Uh, the second book is called The Hunt. Uh, symbiosis right now it's on its second cover i never i still don't like its covers i never did like its first cover the original artwork i wanted i couldn't get because of the uh the artist was let's just say very difficult to work with mm -hmm. so i've been kind of stumbling through trying to find something and i've never come across anything i liked the idea was approaching this 30th anniversary was i combined them in the one volume supersede the problem of the cover of the second book and but i'd have to come up with something new and I also wanted to correspond its release with the beginning of the new series, Now It's a Journey. So it's the first book of both series coming out. Uh huh. Now, this is really volume one and two. It is volume is one and two. Is there a big two. centerpiece here that separates the two? No, no. no. There is a title page in there, but and you'd have to it? dig for it. Yeah. But, but if you read this, you'd know it was two books? Or yeah. Just one? yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. It's definitely two books. Cool. But what's interesting with that cover that came about is the. Last summer, I was invited to be a, a judge at a beauty contest, the Mr. and Mrs. Canada, a multicultural Canada. 
And that was a really awesome experience. But one of the uh, participants, Mary Ellen Moore, she actually ended up being the, the runner-up for Miss uh, Multicultural Canada as well as Miss Photogenic. She, in my mind, she was identical to what Nadia looks like. Like, I almost stopped dead the first time I saw her. She was the spit of this character in my mind. So I had approached her and we talked. We ended up becoming, front, becoming friends and she was okay with being on the cover as the Natty edition. And that's her. Oh. Yeah. Now her eyes aren't green. That's photoshopped because the character has green eyes. But it, it, to me, it was just, it's totally awesome. Small world, right? You make connections like that. Well, I'm more, I don't know if I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I'm more confused. So, I mean, this character that you're writing about, which is totally fantasy man-made fiction yep i never thought of it that you'd actually have an image and that you would actually see in a person yep. in real life so yep. that that's that's a like that's a wake-up call for me i, I never would have thought i always that. And, and sometimes in books there in my books other people's books sometimes there are actual actors that you you always fantasize if it was ever made into a movie this kind of idea and sometimes you just have an image in your mind oh and you know, m- not all readers might see that same thing. Mm-hmm. Everybody's going to bring whatever they have themselves to the table. But yeah, I see most of my characters as somebody. Right down to the green eyes. Right down to the green eyes. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Well, that's that's neat. I love, uh, we talked uh, off air about, um, I love the texture of this matte uh, finish. Yeah. The, um, it's It's very resistant to fingerprints. Yep. Uh, I find, uh, but I like the feel of it, and you know, I really like it when they have the raised um, embossing. Yeah, is that the it's right nice term? F- yeah, yeah, it's uh, a nice feature. And then too. we talked about sometimes you can get this mixed with gloss, mixed with the raised. Yeah, you know, uh, but very expensive. Yeah, you Does, can get gold foil for taxi. There's no limits. Um, did you? Are you still using the same company um, to uh, make these? Like actually physically produce oh the actual printers yeah yeah actually right now i use govin they're uh in gatineau mm-hmm. fantastic really they're good price very uh, good turnaround You're happy with the, the very happy with it yeah uh, do you send them a pdf of this yep uh, at the end you get your quote and, or don't get a quote that's totally up right. to you yeah, yeah. and at the, really what you're doing is sending them two pdfs one's for the cover and yep. one's for the text and that's it and that's it they, they do the press rest. print as they, we know it's yep. on-demand printing and um it, i'm sure their machine at the end of the printing, it actually comes out. You get a, a final book. product. Yeah. Exactly. Amazing, eh? It, it's, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's what we're seeing with the rise of the independent author today as well as the technology has caught up where um, there used to be a time where the self-published author was almost a badge of failure. You know, a sob story about I tried to get published with so many different publishing company after letter rejection, letter rejection. I guess I have no, it's a sob story. I guess I have no sto- choice but to self-publish. That doesn't exist today. Most local independent authors that I know, myself included, we never went the avenue of trying to get traditionally published. We just directly went to self-publishing. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more control. It's a lot more work, but it's all you. You. Well, and, and then you lack distribution or yeah. do you? Yeah. Well, you, you will, yeah, you do in one sense, but from, and I've never, I can't speak from the position of being traditionally published because I haven't been, but of the few authors that I know that have been, I hear a lot of horror stories, certain places they can't go, certain things they can't do. And, you know, uh, one big, it's a little issue, but I make use of it as I always on the back cover have references to uh, the ebooks. Mm-hmm. And I know with a lot of traditionally published authors, you don't ever see that in the back cover because they don't want you to sell the ebook, they want you to sell their book. And in, as a self published author, whether you physically buy my hard copy of a book or buy it as an ebook, doesn't really matter. It right. all comes to me anyway, right? right. Yeah, yeah. So. And and I remember early on when I had you, uh, I think this is your third, maybe third appearance for sure on the show. Uh, early on, you were kind of a big advocate and fighting for independent authors to be at your local chapters, yeah. correct? Yeah. And there's been some headway. There has been. There's been a couple of setbacks and a couple of headways with it. I mean, it's, I, I it's at the end of the day, it's difficult because the self-published local independent author will always you'll never be able to go head to head with the big names 
That's and funny. you're foolish to even try to do that. But I mean, there's no reason why you can't get in there. There's no reason why you can't do it. There's no. I mean, my books are in uh, Coles in Billings Bridge and Coles in uh, uh, Bayshore right now. Is a couple other places also local sh- shops, but and they've been there for years. And you know, yeah, part of it does have. To, they do have to sell. I mean, you do have to uh, get on top of that. A lot of thing. A lot of mistake local authors will make is that. They get to this point where I've got my book in a book sh- a store on a shelf. Woohoo, I'm done. Well, you're not because generally that won't sell it. You got to be there. You've got to be promote on social it. media. You got to promote it. You got to do book signings because that's usually where you do most of the selling is when you're there in person. And you've just got to be on top of that and go, go, go. Mm-hmm. It can be tiring, but there's no reason why it can't be done. Yeah. Well, but there's along the same lines, there's no reason, you know, we we're talking about it, it being difficult for a big bookstore. I mean, how hard would it be to have one shelf of local, meaning That's right. Ottawa yep. authors, and um, you know, you 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 come in, you stock the shelf, you have a slot, and yeah, how hard can that be? No, I mean, can't. is is real estate in a bookstore really that expensive? I've heard the argument know? of that. I don't buy it. I mean, I do think I well, I know for a fact when it comes to Indigo Chapters, Coles, and they're all the same company, it's more or less manager's choice. Um, and pe- some people embrace that and some people don't. Hmm. Um, I think, you know, my personal opinion on that one should be if you're not feeding the grassroots level of writing in general, because everybody at some point was maybe not literally an independent author, but they began somewhere small. If you're not feeding that level, you're only taking the cream of the crop. You're not, you're, the whole, the, the entire industry will eventually at some point collapse if you don't support that. Mm-hmm. And I do think there's an obligation to the bookstore, especially the bigger ones, to support it. Well, it's very similar to the music industry, yep. you know. It's like a big labels don't care about local bands. They promote their big things. They become the hits. Yep. Um, it's the same thing with big bookstores. They have the Stephen King, you know, yep. rows and rows of it. But it's like... Our job is to play local music, and I think a bookstore can certainly help out by by having uh, a shelf. Oh, it's yeah. It's not hard. And, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but maybe there should be some standards, like not everyone's book. How many That's authors right. are there in Ottawa? Just a rough figure. Uh, I don't know. Self-publishing. How many? I couldn't tell you. 20, I know. 50? Oh, I think there's more than that. I know uh, uh, Pros in the Park. I don't think it runs anymore, but it was a summer event. With, for local independent authors and publishers, and they usually had at least 70 local authors there. I didn't even think there was that many. Now, that's just what shows up there. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot more. And, I, you know, and and to be fair, there's also the other end of the spectrum where you get the people that they push their stuff out. It really isn't good. It's not well done. Mm-hmm. The covers don't look well. So you get a large spectrum. So the numbers has got to be very high. But I do agree with you, like, with the... The bookstores having a local, there would be some standard. There'd have to be some standard. Yeah. Because what's to stop somebody from taking a couple of pieces of paper and stitch it together by hand and bring it in? It's like, mm-hmm. well, no, that's not what we're looking for. Right. You want class. Something professional. Something. This is professional. I mean, that's a nice cover. It's laid out. It's got the right thickness. Yeah. It's got the glossy. It's, it's fantastic. Um, so... When you're promoting it, because I'm pretty sure I, I saw a picture of you maybe last year. Uh, you did a, a, a coffee a coffee yeah. house run almost, like yeah. three or four different spots. Yeah, I, How'd that work out? What would you do? Did you read? No. Actually, I never do readings. That's a whole different story. But no, I, I, I show, oh, I, I really get a hold of the... i my list here. <laughs> I show up at the coffee houses. Yep. Uh, usually, they're very happy to have you. And the idea behind a lot of them are, yes, the books are there for sale. But the focus isn't on sales. The focus is on meet and greet, sitting down with people, chit-chatting. Because some of the conversations I get into with people at book signings are really, really cool. But you're limited because, you know, you're standing, you're, you're, you're there to sell the books. And so, you know, you, you have to limit those conversations and you don't really want to. And that's the nice thing about the coffee shops is you literally get to sit with people and talk. And it's, it's amazing. There was one particular incident with uh, a woman had showed up and she was talking about the book of poetry. Nowhere in the book of poetry does it talk about my mother passing away. But a lot of it had to do with that. And she started opening up. She started crying about her mother recently passed away and it resonated with her. And I guess it was the extent of... The writing itself and it was really cool to touch somebody on that level to actually get to and you would never be able to do that in the bookstore you know it doesn't lend itself to that environment mm-hmm. and it, it it's although it was that particular book was never meant 
to be therapeutic or to reach out to people. Ultimately, it's what it did. And I, I think that's I think that's worth a million bucks. Like that's the really, poetry book. Yeah, the poetry book. What's it called? A, a dark corner of my soul. And is it one big poem or no? No, bunch? it's a collection of. Uh, it's only like thirty pages long. Oh, okay. I don't remember how many poems are in there, okay. but it's it's a collection of, and they're all the theme is all relatively. They're not sunshine lollipops. They're pretty dark, heavy stuff. But it's not a, it's not a self help or self healing. No, no, book no. Either. It's none it's of those ones. You, you take it for what it is. It's just you. Yep. Saying and it, what you got to say. That's right. It, it's. I've always found the poetry. I'm. I have another one book of poetry coming out soon. I don't know when. Uh, it's going to be titled uh, Sun and Moon. The title poem Sun and Moon is going to be published in a online uh, aerial chart. It's a monthly journal, so people get to preview it next month in April, and then the book will follow at some point. And the theme of Sun and Moon deals with uh, untenable relationships. I don't say much more beyond that. It's kind of a bittersweet thing. But the funny thing about with the poetry, I find, is I don't ever get nervous for doing radio or TV or book signings or any of those things. But when it comes to releasing poetry... I really get nervous on it because it, it's – if I release – you know, if it, Neurosa Journey comes out this Saturday. So far, everything I've heard from people in the beta readers has been great. But I'm going to come across some people that don't like it. And it's not the end of the world because it's fiction. It's just a story, right? But when you're sharing – it's I guess it would be like lyrics from songs as well. When you're sharing poetry, it's a part of you. It's a very deep part of you. And it comes from usually a very private, maybe even secret place. So you feel – almost naked or vulnerable mm. and it's i get really nervous with those comes out because it's you it's all you it's you in the most raw form that's that's i i never would have thought that i would yeah. have thought of like to me poetry is don't get upset no no just a bunch of random words thrown yeah. together it makes poetry no is sense a hard to sell. me yeah uh, I, I i recently found my poetry i should bring it to you or mail it to you uh, my poetry book or poetry uh high school like training yeah. and it's got examples my own crappy ones you know <laughs> we had to write a, a haiku or what are the seven types of oh poems god quickly? i don't know. You know no but you know they had structure yeah. you know yeah. and it's like there were some forced words meaning just yeah. to meet the rhyme you made up a word yeah. to fit it in yeah. but my point is uh I, I find it odd that you'd be affected more by poetry but you make sense Although this is from your heart and soul, it to is this story. It is, and there's so much more to attack in a story yes. than in poetry. I yeah. would think so. Yeah. It's interesting that you're more yeah. nervous about a poetry release. Than Absolutely. A well, it, it's it, you made me think of something. Changing gears a little bit. You're talking about uh, making words rhyme or forcing the words. And the funny thing, I've got some people ask me about narrow sojourny. The word sojourny. It's not a word, and it should be. And I love these hybrid words like hangry. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, you're angry because you're hungry. It says more than anything could ever, and those are fantastic words. I know there should be. I, I use the word gription. Yeah, it's a combination between friction and getting a grip. Yeah, gription way yeah. better than it says more than you know. It's you spend more time explaining it than the word actually is, yeah. and I love that. And sojourney, but isn't sojourn a word? Sojourn is a word. It means a temporary stay, and journey is traveling from point A to point B. Yeah. I've always thought. Sojourney should be involves a traveling, but it also involves a temporary stay. And from certain perspectives, uh, well, I'm making the word up. Sojourney also involves almost returning to your beginning or discovering yourself in that journey. Hmm. And it's not a word. It should be. Yeah. Start. Is there a place where we can add words? We, we should. Can, we can start making a website and just start or something. Making real words. So this is a re-release. Yes. Combining two volumes. Are they? Is this? This is out now. Or are they being done together? They're being done together. Oh, the really? official launch will be this Saturday, uh, March thirtieth, at Three Brewers in Canada. Three Brewers in Canada. Yeah, it's in the Centrium Center, right across from the theater. Okay. And it runs from four to seven. Seven's not a hard date, not a hard time, because they're not going to kick us out. If we have people there and people are buying drinks, they're mm -hmm. not going to do anything. And no. There's a game that night, so it starts at seven, so most of the place is probably empty out. They'll be happy to have us. I see. Um, I was going to ask you if you wanted to do a reading, but you say no readings. How I, come? I don't do readings because it, it's funny. I'll give you something instead of a reading. Um, 
Well, wait, wait. Before you okay. do, just for the record, yeah, I've never asked anyone to do a reading. No, because I've always find it a little weird. Yeah. Like when I see it on TV or somebody, it's like, well, you read a section of the book and they stand up and they read it. And it's like, yeah, so yeah. Like, it's almost meaningless because it's just well, it's this, out of context, right? Exactly, yeah. it's out of it's like this section yeah. out of context. It yeah. means nothing. It's yeah. just a bunch of words. So, yeah. I've always been confused. I'd rather hear the person talk about, you know, what went into it and, and how to destroy your soul <laughs> or, or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so go. No, no readings. No reading. One of the reasons why is I'm. I'm very comfortable when it comes to being on the radio or talking or chit-chatting or TV. The one thing a lot of people don't know is when I was very young, preschool age, uh, my grandmother lived with us and my mom and my grandmother were both French. My dad was in the forces. He was out in scheme a lot. And I remember as a preschool age watching and listening on the radio, Bubby No and Bubby Net. And it was always ever in French. It was never in English. My mem- To this day, my memory of it is still English. It never was. So what I think is at that time in my life, I spoke French only, no English. And then as I got older, you know, you don't use it, you lose it. I understand more French and I'm capable of speaking. But, and that was a factor in there. I also lived in Germany and Europe for a while. And I think, well, Throughout grade five and grade six, I went through extensive remedial classes for a speech impediment. And I think it had to do with the French and the English and the German. There was a lot of different factors that shape how you think in that. Um, I'm very conscious of those speech impediments. Most people don't pick up on them. I do. And that's one of the reasons. It's one thing to chit chat, but it's a very different thing to read something scripted. You're not a self-conscious guy. No, I'm not a self-conscious Come guy. On. I am to some extent. But yeah. I, I don't hear nothing. Yeah. No, I know. I do. Really? I'm aware of it. Give me yeah. a word that you just said that you, you're aware of. Or... How about no? <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's hard to... It's not that specific. It's more of an awareness than it is anything else. Yeah, and but half the battle, you know, is always knowing it. Yeah. So you know it. Yeah. And that could it very well be one of the things is I know it. And like I say, I go back to these classes were in grade five and grade six. Um, we're talking a very long time ago. Yeah. So there may be nothing left anymore. You've but been over the... You've been... I'm sure the scarring isn't that bad. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm not it. trying to paint it out to yeah, be yeah. that bad, but it's it's one of the reasons why I don't do readings. Will that change? Do people want readings? I've had a, I have one of my beta readers. Um, I, I love her to death. She's very good. She's more of an editor than a beta reader, although she won't accept that title. And she's on my case all the time about you've got to do readings. I'm not giving you an option. It's like, what do you mean? You're putting your foot down with me? What's going on here? But what I've done for this upcoming event at Three Brewers is I have a bunch of uh, cards I've made up. They have different various covers and artwork on them. And inside of them all have quotes from the various books. So it's it's not a reading, but it's close to it. And part of the idea behind that is, you know, we might have people sitting at different tables chit-chatting. Or we might have people that don't know each other at different tables chit-chatting or not chit-chatting. That could be an avenue to start discussion, you know? Okay, here's a big issue here. Yep. Audiobooks. Audiobooks. I don't have any right now. I've been approached. So, uh, if you have one, yeah. you'll have to read it. No, no, they offer you a reader. No. They do. Oh, that sucks. Sorry, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do. They. I, I've reached... Um, I, I guess I, it makes sense on a professional level, yeah. you know? But it could get really boring if you're a big user of audio books and you keep hearing the same yeah. voice yeah. on every person's book. Yeah. So where yeah. you stand on this, we'll get you in the studio and we'll put this yeah. well, you know, it's, an it's, audio I've thought, I've played with the idea. I use a draft to digital as a platform for the e-books and they're offering a new service, I think since last summer, about audiobooks and they provide voice over uh, voice samples of you get to choose what you might want or who you might want um there's been a lot this last six months has been crazy in my end so i've never pursued that yet but the other thing i've been playing with is i know a hand small handful of people that are in media and radio and you know you have radio voices right Mm -hmm. that might be the avenue to go because they're local but you know it's i and i like that idea of keeping things local keeping it home-based it might be a really cool thing to pursue yeah for sure um and then there's the issue male or female voice yeah right would that play a role in, in these things? It probably would. I never gave that a lot of thought, but yeah, it probably would. Mm-hmm. 
I always defaulted to male, but maybe that's just the mindset in my head. I never give that thought. I want to hear the audio book and hear you read the whole thing. <laughs> it's not that hard. You just read it and, uh, you know, make a few edits here or there. I, I don't know what's involved. It must be a... Well, it must be a big audio file for it's, starters. It's got to be huge. And uh, I'm sure there's editing involved. and Retakes. Uh, but yeah, uh, picking a standard voice for audio books, it could get boring. I've well, yeah, you don't want monotone, but yeah. you do want, where do you go with that? Yeah, and then male or female, you've got a big, big yeah. problem in front of you. So there's a possibility there'll be an audio book down the road. It, yeah, it's, it's within, I might start with something small, mm -hmm. maybe even a book of poetry because it's manageable and go from there and see what happens. I can't believe there's all these ebook, uh, uh, like I know about Kindle. It's crazy. And to go, but what's Nook? The one, th I, like I said, what's I use G? draft to digital for uh, the platform. What's nice with them is that you give them one file and they distribute it to all their various, and there's, there's some of them I've never heard of. There's one of them that's out in Australia, uh -huh. but why not? I mean, I'm not, sure. not going to take it. And it's nice that they have those kind of platforms out there, and it's just it's a wider market. Is that software you say draft to digital? Is that what you're talking about? It's a website, yeah. Oh, it's a website. Yeah, they they offer that service, and what's nice about it is they take I forget what it is they take a they take a fee off of what sells, but you don't pay anything to, to get into put it. it there. Yeah, yeah. Which and it, which is how it should be. Well, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, we'll just take a small break here, get some uh, legal station IDs out of the way, and uh, we'll be back in just a few seconds. Uh, we're talking to Michelle Weatherall. He is a local author, just put out a new book, and uh, say that again where uh, the premiere will be. It will be at uh, Three Brewers in Canada Centrum Center this Saturday, March 30th from 4 to 7. Cool. This is CKCU 93.1 FM in the nation's capital. Mm. We're online. If you're interested in keeping up to date with everything going on here at CKCU, be sure to follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram at CKCU FM. Being a student is really exhausting mentally. Having to change from a job I'd groomed myself for my whole life and trained for, and it was an incredible shock on the system. I didn't realize how many diapers that we had to go through. Every dollar counts. The GST HST credit, workers benefit, and the Canada Child Benefit can help. Find out if you qualify. Visit canada.ca slash my benefits and credits for more information. A message from the Government of Canada. You are listening to CKCU 93.1 FM in Ottawa. It is 8.41, and my ears are just popping because I took a big uh, big sip of coffee, and my, my ears popped. Uh, I'm in the studio with uh, Michelle Weatherall. He uh, has produced um, a few books, a Symbiote, and I uh, hope I get this right, uh, Narrows So Journey. That's it. Cool. And uh, you're having your big release uh, this coming Saturday. I am. And uh, beer will be involved because it's at a brewery, right? There that, will that be, That is yeah. a brewery. It is a brewery. I wasn't sure. Um, Eat there too, but yeah. Do you? Yeah. Do you go there often? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. It, it's close to where I live, so. Uh, when you say beta readers, um, how does that work out? They, they just looking at a PDF uh, before no, you actually press No, usually they print? get something that's very close to what looks like final because I'm in the print industry anyway, so getting copies are not a big deal for me. Oh, Hard copies are better to proof than anything online. Yes. Uh, a lot of people make that mistake. I've done it before. I've edited something online and went back, and I can't believe what I've missed. You know, yeah, give me a piece of paper. Yeah, circle, that's right. Circle, mark this yeah. piece of paper and that's right what, up. And that's ultimately what their beta readers are doing. What they're, and it's funny. I use a group of about six, give or take. They all bring different aspects to the table, which is cool. Some of them have like what I call geek lore. They're the ones that are going to look for inconsistency. Oh, details in the in the in the, the mythology timeline. itself. Okay. Yeah, the other ones are like I said. One of my friends is she's virtually an editor, and she's fantastic for stuff like that. And it, it it's one of the challenges I think it's I think it's a crippling challenge for local independent authors is going getting traditionally edited can be extremely expensive to the point where you might have a book that's not even sellable. You may never see it back because some places charge, like a good price I hear is between two to four cents a word. <laughs> Narrow's Journey is coming in at 105,000 words. 
uh, do the math, that's over $4,000 in editing. You have to do the math of not only how many copies do I have to sell, also what does that make my per copy price at? You can get to the point where you can't get a, a price point. So the alternate is what do you do? Do you just not edit? Do you? There are alternate ways of doing it. Um, I use, and maybe beta readers isn't the right term, but they'll go through it. They'll they'll highlight areas they come across. I go through it more than once, and at the end of the day, the final product you get back is pretty in good shape. And I also do small runs of 50s to 100. So when I get the next run, if I come across issues, you just correct them and keep going. A lot of them are minor, mm-hmm. but uh, again, that's a challenge. It's almost a white elephant in a room nobody wants to talk about. Because I know so many local independent authors that go through traditional methods. And you got to ask yourself, is if I'm self-identifying as an indie author, why would I try to mimic a traditionally published author? I'm capable of, there's a lot more leeway I have. I can do a lot more things. I can get into a lot more different stores. I can do a lot more different formats. Why not follow that? Why not embrace that? Mm-hmm. I, I'd like to talk to the person. Um, <clears throat> I guess they'd be the continuity expert to make sure everything is... Yeah. Uh, and that's a major issue with my books. Being transferred from, yeah. from book to book. Um, it'd be interesting to see what mechanism they do, or is it all in their head? You yeah. know, it's like Star Trek. When Star Trek's an amazing TV show, um, but the story, you know, no matter if it's yeah. done this year or 20 years ago, they, they connect. They're the stories, yeah. you know, the shared they universe. make sense. And it's like, yeah, they they make they take... They take um, what's the... Uh, advantage of the situation sometimes yep. Uh, yep. do you do that as well like can you exploit your timeline i ultimately yes to make um, a, a radical because narrow sojourney actually is a tangent from one short story in the refuse chronicles and what's going to be interesting with narrow or the new series narrow sojourney is book one of the series but the series fractures ultimately deals with parallel universes uh, you you get it if you look for it in the first book you'll see it but it's not really predominant because it's set in 1850 our world but there's there's little signs I mean later on down the series when you read the other books if you come back to it you'll start picking up oh there we go and but you, again you need to be careful because you need to start monitoring what's going on and where it's happening and are these standalone books though can I can I buy and just read that this? one is yes or is there going to be a cliffhanger at the end. Well, it's part of a series, so there will be more coming. Um, but it is a story in a itself. Standalone. There is a beginning, middle, and end. Okay. And obviously, it's going to segue into more, but sure. it does tell a story. That's one thing it's I can't stand. Book, it's a right? standalone book, It's a standalone book. Okay, yeah. that's the big issue. I, I hate books where, like, the but latest movie. It just movie, leaves you hanging. Like, I got volume three, four, five, six, seven. That one will bring you. And no, it's a standalone book as well. Okay. Um, it does lead into the second one, yeah. but it tells a story in itself. When you're done this, you've got a conclusion in your head. Yes. That can be carried forward. That's right. It, it doesn't have to right. be. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I, I was just noticing here your um the symbiote is uh, weird fiction horror and um the Narrow Sojourney uh, Narrow Sojourney is uh, weird fiction action adventure. Yes. I I honestly Changes can't really say for Narrow Sojourney I can't really say horror. There are elements of it in there, mm-hmm. but it's not. It's more of an action. I the one thing that always attracted me to that was I've always loved a couple of books from uh, Edgar Allan Poe has a novelette or a novella out called The Narrative of Gordon Arthur Pym of Nantucket, which is it's, it's a nautical adventure, and uh, Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. They're fantastic adventure stories, and I love the idea of they're going different places. They're on the ocean. There's ships. There's these undesirables. There's the pirates. There's all these elements in it, and that really attracted me to the idea of it, and that's where Naros Journey, it doesn't, it's not specifically those, but the main character is a Maori chieftain, and it's his nautical adventures across the South Pacific, Hmm. and I don't want to say a lot more than that because it will start giving stuff away. Very neat. I like the cover, too. Um, Where did that come from? The original article. Well, well, who did the design? Because it's like... Oh, it's a photo. I actually found that one. Oh, okay. Um, the original artwork I wanted was a photograph, and I tracked the photographer down, and he wanted a $1,200 non-exclusive licensing fee for it. And I said, yeah, that's not going to happen. And I ultimately went with this, and I'm, I'm happier with this cover than the original one. Mm-hmm. That's very but, nice. Uh, yeah, that's where it went. And so uh, uh, I know a bit about this uh, FSC paper um, 
you know a lot about that too i bet yeah being in the printing industry uh, i took a course <laughs> i did uh, through a paper company talking all about fsc paper uh it basically means it's recycled yeah 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 uh, which is very good um so do you do pre-sales has this been not yet sold or when um, you release you release i like, release yeah and then i'll be following up with a book tour across pla- various places in ottawa but um this on although it's after the book launch on april 27th there is a fundraiser event called ray of light and it raises money for mental illness uh, i had originally met miley badista at the faces of ottawa awards gala and we chit chatted about that and not just narrow to journey my entire collection is going to be there as a silent auction to help raise funds for that oh cool and uh, yeah so that should be exciting so that's like eight books or nine uh okay. all together hold on i know you gotta make me count now well and now you're gonna have to so you've got one and two in here so you yeah got the one the two the three four five six so one two three four technically five and your poetry book yeah and that there's one. another one that's not out yet it won't be available but what's also neat with this ray of light is the model on the cover mary ellen moore she's going to be participating in the event as well so it's it's kind of cool I can set her up with some green uh, contact, contact. lenses. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dispensing optician. So Ray of Light, where is that happening again? April 27th? April 27th. Um, I don't remember location off the top oh. of my head. I should. Okay. Um, I'm, I've been invited to be as a VIP there just, just for fun. It, mm-hmm. looks like a, it looks like a fun evening. Okay. And like I said, it, it raises funds for mental illness or an awareness of it as well as. I'll look it up. Yeah. And um, th- these two, uh, the release, just I'm going to write it down so I can say it at the end of the show as well. Uh, this week? It's, yes, sep- uh, Saturday, uh, March 30th. S- Saturday, the 30th of March at Three Brewers? Three Brewers, Canada. Three Brewers, and that's a brewery. Yeah. Do you know it's the address? A, it's a restaurant pub. Uh, 565 Canada Avenue. Oh, okay. Are you from there? Uh, I am. Okay. I'm out in Canada. Poor you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's just all the bylaws that still exist. Do you know you're not allowed to have a clothesline? I know. But you're allowed to have an umbrella tree. Yes. Because it's so much visually more attractive. Yeah, so much, eh? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Um, So how are your books selling? How is this um, working for you financially? It works Are you able to make a living? Yeah, no. 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 I mean, Like a musician, it's just a part-time hobby. It's one of the things that draws me into this, and I'm very adamant on not compromising creative integrity. Now, having said that, I'm not going to go into something to lose his money. Like, it, there is a business aspect to it as well as, mm-hmm. and they're selling and I'm making money doing it. I'm not making a living off no. of it, but hey, who knows what the future holds? What kind of numbers? Numbers? Uh, are we talking thousands of books overall, all of them, or hundreds? Uh, hundreds or thousands? I would I'm say sure hundreds. not in the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, no, no, it'd be in the hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, it's like, it's, it's akin to. Uh, you know, some local music. Yeah. Um, they might put out a CD. They might put out vinyl. They don't sell thousands. They yeah. sell hundreds. And they have a release party. Yeah. And um, Well, it, it's funny you say that because I remember, like I said, I've started doing this about four years ago. When I first began, I was on Goodreads, which is kind of like a Facebook web page for, for authors and readers and all that. And the first idea that hits you is, wow, it's a world market. It's huge. I can go anywhere, ebooks, blah, blah, blah. And, the, and it was at one point I, I said to myself, no. I'm going. I'm not going to not have those things happen, but I'm going to focus on Ottawa exclusively, and just stay local. Get your feet wet here. Get uh, dig your heels in and become a name in the city itself. And then if things progress past that, awesome. And if they don't, if it's just Ottawa, awesome. Because I do think Ottawa has an incredible amount of talent and people here. Well, I say that all the time. I, you know. Um happiness is is not a place yeah uh, number one so when people think oh i can do better in california or yeah. somewhere it's like no you can't no. there's there's more people more i love the quote no matter where you go there you are you bring yourself with you <laughs> yeah um stick stick up or stand up for your yeah. hometown and uh, don't buy into this nonsense it's better here or there it's just not it, yep. it just clearly isn't and, and besides you can become a world you know with the internet your book's oh, yeah. available online. Yep. I'm sh- what's the furthest, weirdest place that someone's uh, downloaded? Uh, Estonia. <clears throat> there you go. Has a couple of there. And I, I've actually had somebody from Estonia wanted an autographed ebook. So, you know, like, what's going on <laughs> in Estonia? How, what, how did that person actually it come makes across you wonder. to the point where they want an autographed copy? Yeah. That's ebook. Like, 
autograph ebook at that. Which that's I, hard to do. It's not Unless impossible, you, well, but you it's can like send them a digital mm, signature. Maybe. That's, that's about the size of it. <laughs> Just a super like here, I'll sign it, photograph it, and stick it on well, the e version. Yeah. Here you go. If that's what turns you on. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned earlier, uh, even though these are only being released this week, yep. you've got more in your head. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, actually, in Naros the Journey, I mean, the people listening on the radio aren't going to be able to see this. I'm opening to the back of the book. There is an ebook that follows called Escape Hatch, and then the cover for the next book, Invasion, is already in it as well as. Wow. So it's, it's why do you, it, wow. Why it's, do you call it the Fractures series? Uh, What's I'm the, trying to think of not something that's not going to give it away. Oh, come Reality, on. No in, one, the, in the end of the previous series, something happens. The symbiote. The symbiote series in which uh, something happens. reality is fractured. We get multiple universe is coming out of it okay of the event so this is part of the and fracture series? that's part of the fractures so we're one. seeing uh parallel universes is what we will be seeing cool that's so neat oh, oh here it is uh, it's the first book of the new series fractures yeah it's gonna be called fractures no it's, no it's the series the series and is you'll a have a different series. name yeah. so this one is narrow so journey is the first sorry, book and then the there is a invasion. free ebook called um escape hatch which is a segue between Book one and what will be book two. Book two is Invasion. Yeah. Book three is tentatively Tamara the Lost Years. Holy and cow. the fourth and final book is War. And you're doing caps. that from your mind. I am. Uh, does it end there? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I don't understand. It's like you got this. How long does it take for you to write this? Or That one took from it, beginning to out. end was probably a little under two years. And then this next one, is it half done, all done? It's none done. None done. None done. And Speak invasion, in English, no? None done? No, this one's actually out. The ebook oh, is out and available. That's out. Because that's a link to it. This but is not done. nothing done. Not a word. Right no, not a word. But it's in your head. I have ideas, yeah. You're, you're confident. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've committed to it. It's in print. Will it take two <laughs> years, too? It, I hope not. <laughs> it might. What is the time? Why does it take two years? Is it... Does it take two years to kind of put the words on paper, or is it two years from start to end of process? There's a lot of factors. There's formatting. There's covers. There's artwork. There's, I mean, there's the actual physical, literally writing it itself. Yeah, so... But there's also the... Well, I call it mapping. I always like mapping a storyline out in my... Whether it's on paper or on a wall or in my head. The main... What things are happening. You come in as a writing fill-in in later on. But even that map as the story progresses changes sometimes. You'll come up with an idea that's like really, really awesome. You may have to go back and rewrite stuff to make it work. Uh, but, but your continuity person is going to nail you if you don't get it right. I won't ask them to do get Do you have a map? Do uh, you have some sort of I do. I use, uh, I just graphical not always, um, kind of flow chart? I do. It's really messy looking. That's okay. It's, uh, but you understand but it. But I understand it. And yeah. it explains the flow. And, yeah. you know, it might go that way, that way, this way. That's or, right. Oh, there's a change. Circle yeah. it. Uh, asterisk yeah. it. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, that's really neat. And how many did you say? Four? There'll be, this is book two. You said four, right? I'm thinking four. You're thinking yeah. four. The final one is definitely to be called war. But it could change. Probably not. I know the direction I'm going with this whole series, and the last one will basically it's going to be a m multiple alternate universe warfare. We get it's going to be the scale so is pretty now big. Now we have phasers and starships. No, 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 no. It's no. not sci-fi. We're no. dealing with alternate realities. Oh, it could be anything, and it could be like could this be one is set feather. in. Yeah, this one is set in 1850. The the prelude into. Uh, Frac um, sorry, the f prelude into the next one, Invasion, is set in 2019, our world. And it's just going to, we're going to start being introduced to different universes. You know, I wish I could read books. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I can read, but I just, I'm not a book reader. And I don't know, I, I think it's not because I don't like it. It's because I can't focus. Yeah. I can't concentrate. Once I start reading... After a page or two, my mind goes somewhere else. It's yeah. almost like I cannot stay focused, even though I might be in a place within the book, yeah. within the story. It, it just takes one nanosecond, and poof, I'm thinking about something else, and then I'm lost. I, I've left yeah. the world yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. 
any advice on how to stop that? Or is, I, do you understand what I'm I do understand. About? I mean, the one thing I, I see a lot with my, my kids that are like 20 and 22, and I see a lo- younger generation, this is less read. Well, it applies to reading as well, but it's more their attention span is a lot shorter. I want the one minute story. Yeah. And I, it, I think part of it's because of the, mul- uh, the social media, it's because of YouTube. Um, it's difficult for them to sit and watch an entire movie, let alone because they're used to those very condensed YouTube clips. Mm hmm. And I, I, it's indicative of that generation. Now, in your case, I don't know because you're not part of that generation. No, but, but I, I read too much technical stuff. Yeah. And technical stuff would hold me. I yeah. don't know why. Um, um, nonfiction might hold me, but it better be a subject I really like. Yeah. I like fiction. I like science fiction. But uh, sometimes the book itself is responsible for taking me somewhere else. Yeah. It, it takes me out of the story. Yeah. It, does that Gives make you sense? An idea. Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. It gives so, you an idea and your mind starts meandering. Yeah, there. and then I stop and it's like, you know. So I've I? got stacks of books <laughs> with bookmarks in them. And it's like, will I ever go back? Probably not. It's now it's summer and I've yeah. got to get doing stuff and it's, it's complicated. Um, we've run out of time. That was a, a, a quick hour. Went it fast. just flew by. Uh, I want to thank you for coming in. I'm sorry about the parking situation. Not a problem. And um, Always happy to be here. Thanks make for sure having me. Make sure you let me know when, uh, v- n- and hopefully it won't be two years, but uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll try to remember that you said two years, and maybe you'll be done in a year. Yeah. Well, right? I have that book of poetry coming out. That's going to be happening in between. Oh, for sure. Oh, right, right. So, I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Um, we're talking to Michelle Weatherall, a local artist. He's got several books out, the latest being Narrow's Sojourney, uh, coming out uh, this Saturday at uh, Three Brewers in Canada. So uh, check that out. Uh, he will not read, but, <laughs> but you will sign. I will sign. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Michelle, for thank coming you. in. It's uh, 9 o'clock. Time now for the BBC News. You're listening to C.